Hi, and welcome everybody to this session of the Extreme Performance Series, where we're bringing you all kinds of cool and interesting performance information and talking to some of our famous performance gurus. So uh, today with me, I have one of our vMotion gurus, uh, Shri. And so Shri, why don't you introduce yourself? Let everybody know what you're up to. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Shrikant. I've been with uh, VMware uh, for more than 13 years now. And uh, for the last six years or so, I've been looking at uh, vMotion performance and uh, looking at all aspects of uh, vMotion performance. It could be a long distance or it could be encryption, encrypted vMotion or long, you know, uh, uh, yeah, or uh, uh, monster size VM and so on, you know, uh, that's what my focus has been. Well, and vMotion has always been that pretty cool technology, right? Take a VM from a source, we throw it somewhere else. That's the magic sauce. And, you know, I think folks have kind of thought, well, we have that, we beat that. But, you know, there's some new interesting challenges coming up with vMotion, right? When we start talking about scale, right? How do we move a monster VM, right? Yes. Yes. The goal of vMotion has always been to make the migration as transparent as possible to guest applications, right? The guest applications shouldn't feel that they're being migrated. And these challenges become more uh, acute or uh, more tougher for other interesting cases like long distance or, you know, imagine uh, mass size VM. When you have 468 VCB VM, how do you migrate that without, you know, making the vMotion as less impactful as possible to the guest applications? Those are challenges which makes this life very interesting. Well, that's awesome. Well, let's share out some of the data that you have for us today. I'd love to see what we can do now. Thank you. Sure. Uh, let me share my screen. So before we start talking about all the new optimizations we added, I just want to quickly review how vMotion actually works. Okay, vMotion works by iteratively copying the memory of a running VM from source host to destination host. Okay, so let's say you have the VM running on the source, right? So uh, before we start this copy, we always trace guest memory pages. The idea of tracing is it enables hypervisor to track any, uh, track any guest page modifications. So in the first copy, we all you know, transfer the entire guest memory. But remember, this is a running VM so the guest is continuing to modify changes, right? So we track these changes thanks to the traces we installed earlier, and we only transfer those dirty pages. And this process continues until this process completely conver converges. So this is the point where we completely stop VM execution and transfer it over to the destination. And this entire process is typically uh, puts very less impact on the guest. For instance, uh, um, here I'm showing you the how Oracle throughput looks like during this vMotion, right? And I'm showing you where uh, the markers, where the vMotion begins and where vMotion ends. And if you look on our x-axis, the time is at one second granularity. And so we're looking at uh, uh, Oracle throughput every one second during entire vMotion, and the impact is pretty minimal. The only dip you see is during the switch over time, where we have to stop the VM execution on the source host and switch over to the destination. And even there, Oracle and response time was less than uh, half a second. So as you can see, for most uh, typical sized VMs, even for large VMs here, we have a 72 vCPUs and one terabyte. Uh, the guest impact uh, is pretty minimal by vMotion. But what happens when we increase the VM to almost, uh, uh, let's say some by a seven X factor, which is like uh, 480 vCPUs. Then the performance doesn't look so pretty. Because if you look here at, uh, uh, here we're only focusing on the switch over time because this is the most challenging aspect of the motion, right? During the, this time, you can see Oracle took nearly seven seconds to respond even when the VM was powered on. The purple bar here is showing when the VM was actually powered on on the destination host. So in the previous slide, we, we talked about it took less than half a second, but here it takes seven seconds for Oracle to respond. So why is that this issue is only seen for mass size VM, but we don't see for any other workloads or for any typical size VMs, right? To understand this, we have to quickly revisit some of the basics on how guest memory access works in virtualized environment. In a virtualized environment like uh, ESX, initial guest memory access always goes through two levels of translations. We have the page walker, which has to walk through the guest page tables to translate from guest virtual to guest physical. And then it also has to walk to the page tables of ESX to translate from guest physical to machine level. And then it has to create an uh, entry in the nested page table. 
this is an expensive process. So keep that in mind and let's see how that plays out during Vmotion. So before the start of Vmotion, this nested page table is completely fully populated on the source host. That's where the guest memory access is very fast. And so uh, guest performs really well. But now what happens during Vmotion? During the Vmotion, remember, we're transferring the entire state to the destination and we completely tear down the source VM on the source host and start with a brand new VM on the destination host with an empty nested page table, right? Now, what, uh, what that means is, now all the new guest memory accesses, again, have to be validated inside the hypervisor and hypervisor has to create a new uh, entry in the nested page table. And now imagine if you have a mass size VM with 480 vCPUs running a heavy duty workload, Immediately after remotion, all these 480 vCPUs are contending uh, for locks to create these mappings in the nested page table. And so what we noticed was immediately after remotion for these monster size VMs, there's so much lock contention that guest is so sluggish. Okay, and this is not typically an issue for small VMs because there's you know less vCPUs uh, uh, which are contending for the uh, locks. So now how do we fix this lock issue, right? There are different ways to build this nested page table on the destination host. One is like on-demand translation, that is whenever the guest is touching the page, let's create an entry. But as you've seen, that keeps the stun time very short, but the guest is very, very sluggish. Other choice is why not uh, uh, translate all these uh, entire, uh, you know, build the entire nested page table on the destination host before even VM resumes, right? That, that you know, really gives a good response time of our guest applications but it really extends the uh, you know, downtime, which is not acceptable either. So the approach we've taken was, why not take the best of both worlds? And we came up with this in interesting and innovative idea where we pre-translate only the guest working set of pages, right? That way we get, uh, we strike a really good balance between the remotion time and also getting a good response, you know, guest response times. Now that would be a bit of a challenge though, Sri, right? To say, well, well what's the working, uh, set of pages here. You know, how do you guys do that? Yes, that is the most challenging question, right? I mean, uh, we have, a, let's say, four terabytes of memory, but we want to, you know, translate only just enough uh, working set of pages to get a good performance, right? So that way we keep the downtime also very short. But how do we identify those pages? To identify those pages, let's revisit how the pre-copy works, right? We talked about this earlier in the earlier slide, where we say uh, we track all the 30 pages and transfer them during the pre-copy, right? So in theory, vMotion framework already has a way to track the working set for guest writes, right? We already know what uh, pages the guest is writing. So we know at least the uh, hot pages with regards to the guest writes. But what about guest reads? In theory, what we found was, uh, uh, even if we just you know, validate these 4KB pages, but instead use a, a large page mappings, which is a 2MB page, right? 2MB is like a 512 uh, small pages, which makes a large page, right? It's a L2 level page. So if you make a, uh, create a mapping for the uh, large page, which contains this small 4KB page, which actually triggered the file, we are getting a good performance. Okay, uh, I know this is uh, an important point, so let me repeat once more. Vmotion always tracks 30 pages at the 4KB page level, right? This is the smallest page, 4KB page. But what we're saying is instead of creating a mapping uh, only for this 4KB page, we create a mapping for the uh, 2MB large page, which also includes this small 4KB page, which resulted in the trace file, right? So that means uh, uh, we're able to capture the much bigger portion of the working set, which includes write as well as a good portion of the guest reads as well. Well, that's a very interesting way to kind of handle that. And it seems like it would be very intuitive and obviously the statistics show that it works out for us. Yes, yeah, uh, what we've noticed is it may not capture the entire uh, full portion, but a good portion of the uh, uh, guest reads were able to capture. Uh, so that way, and also remember, using the large page backings have other advantages because uh, when we use large page backings, it also improves the TLB hit ratio and thereby improves guest performance. So overall, it's a win-win situation. It gives us a good uh, guest performance as well as good uh, guest response time immediately after the immersion. And so what did that look like when we ran that experiment? And we added some more optimizations. Even to validate these pages, we also split the work parallelly among all the vCPUs. So we keep the pre-validation time very, very short. Okay. 
So after that, you know, the performance looks great. Here, what we're showing is uh, 7 uh, uh, update 1 and 7 update 2, because this change in, went into update 2. And the blue line is the baseline, right? Where it took Oracle seven seconds to respond. With these changes, what we saw was Oracle took just about 250 milliseconds to respond. It's like uh, amazing uh, improvement. In fact, if you look, it's like uh, uh, almost like 28 times more improvement from seven seconds, it just takes to 250 milliseconds after the VM was powered on the destination host. Uh, that's amazing. And I guess, you know, the other thing, interesting to, thing to re-highlight here is the fact that that is a mega monster VM, 480 vCPUs, right? I mean, in, within our customer base, that's probably about a handful of folks doing that. Yes. But look at the amazing performance we can now do at, at pushing those, those large VMs around. That's significant. Yes, and this won't affect at all uh, typical size VMs. If any, it only helps them too. Well, it's good to see you again that uh, here what we want to do with the vSphere platform is support everybody, right? Everybody's little VMs, everybody's large VMs, and we want the technology like vMotion to be transparent for both sizes. And I think those enhancements we see for you too have, have absolutely done that. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Well, excellent work again. We're very excited to share some of these performance details with you. And uh, stay tuned and look forward to the next edition of the Extreme Performance Series. Thanks, Shree, for joining us today. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Tara. Thanks, Tara.